Welcome back for this week's technical. Now, a quick request, if you are new to the channel and you aren't already subscribed, consider clicking that subscribe button and ringing the little bell next to it. That means you'll get updates about new videos. And look, what's the worst that could happen? If you end up subscribed and you're not enjoying the other videos, just unsubscribe, it's as easy as that. I bet you, you will enjoy some of these videos. Anyway, on with the technical. I got the idea for today's topic from a friend of mine that's having a conversation with him online, Ryan from Highland Agri Contractors. As some of you will know, if you follow Ryan on social media or you've seen my vlog with him, Ryan, amongst the other skills he has, is a sheep scanner. And we were talking about one specific aspect of sheep performance. As a recovering beef and sheep vet, one of the areas with these clients I used to struggle with a bit is benchmarking, i.e. collecting data on performance. Compare that to a dairy farmer where every time that animal gets milked, that farmer's getting feedback on that animal's health, her nutrition, and her yield. With beef and sheep, the options for data collection are much more limited. And so, when we get an opportunity, generally, I think we should take it and make the most of it. Now, there is one benchmarking tool that sheep farmers in the UK and elsewhere have really gotten on board with, and it's now almost universally used and that is the scanning percentage. If you're in the UK, sheep scanners will be in the thick of it right now, spending days on end sitting in cold trailers to give you that magic little card at the end of the day which tells you just how many lambs you should be expecting. And they do all of that with an anxious farmer peering over their shoulder all day. And now this headline figure, scanning percentage, really means the number of lambs you should be expecting expressed as a percentage of the ewes put to the ram. Crucially, not the number of ewes in lamb. Don't omit those empties. Beware the pub talk of massive percentages because you just don't know if that person has omitted their empties or dries without asking them. And that scanning percentage, actually there are two distinct figures feeding into it. And it's worth breaking them down, especially in a veterinary capacity when troubleshooting. First of all, you have your litter size distribution. So that's how many singles do you have compared to how many twins compared to how many triplets or even quads. Increasingly, I think most sheep farmers would acknowledge there's probably an optimum. It's not necessarily more is more. For example, some more intensive indoor lambing systems are looking for perhaps 200% plus. Some outdoor lambers seem to be looking for more around the 180% mark to avoid having too many triplets to deal with outdoors. It's definitely horses for courses and that optimum litter distribution is going to vary depend on breed, on farm, on system. But the second component, which is what we're going to talk about today, is the barren rate also called the geld rate or the yield rate or the empties, the dries, depending on where in the world you are. That is the percentage of ewes mated that did not get in lamb. They're emptied, no lambs in them. And with perhaps a couple of exceptions, most farmers are looking for this to be as close to zero as reasonably possible. And so it's barren rate that I'm concentrating on today. The reasons for a high barren rate tend to be subtly different to those for a low litter size average. Although saying that, there is a lot of overlap and there's nothing to say you can't have two things going on at once. The list of reasons is also very long and I'm not actually going to discuss the specific reasons because A, that would make this a much longer video and I don't want you guys to fall asleep and B, those reasons are going to be so specific to country, region, individual farm that actually you're better off going and talking to your vet about these which are most applicable to you. Instead today I want to focus on this question. When is a barren rate too high? and when do I need to start investigating? Like I said, ideally it would be 0%. But we don't live in an ideal world, so we have to come up with some sort of acceptable level we can tolerate. And the figures all of us are taught at vet school is really about 2% or lower for a lowland flock and 3% or lower for a hill or upland flock, maybe nudging into 4%. And you'll see similar figures banded around by farming organizations like AHDB or QMS. It's important to note that these are targets, not averages. If you start looking at some of the averages from national benchmarking projects, you'll notice that these barren rates are actually much higher. And that's about right. Targets should be achievable, but challenging. And yes, every farm is different, but that is at least a starting point to know when we might have to start investigating our barren rate. And as you can imagine, the bigger the discrepancy, the more urgently and thoroughly we might follow that up. If someone's barren rate is 2.5% on a lowland farm, 
arm. We might not get that excited. If that was five or 10%, people would start to be getting hotter under the collar more quickly. But it's not just the level of discrepancy. What other factors might make us decide to investigate a baron rate in sheep? Number one, the age of the group. Shillings, or whatever you call them, because they've got about a million different names, tend to have a slightly higher baron rate than mixed aged mature ewes. They also tend to have a lower average litter size. The same goes again doubly for ewe lambs. And that's because those animals are still growing. Their body has to make decisions to partition, to share energy between growth and fertility. So it's perfectly acceptable to see a higher baron rate in these younger classes of sheep. Saying that, there isn't really any hard and fast rule about the level of this discrepancy we might accept and the extent to which how well grown those replacements are might affect this. Also, a disproportionately high barren level in those sheep shouldn't be ignored because it's indicative of certain root causes of a low scanning percentage, particularly the infectious ones. So our tolerance for barren rates in younger sheep ought to be higher, but not excessively high. The next factor is how even was that barren rate across the different mating groups? If nine out of 10 mating groups went perfectly well and one out of 10 did very poorly, that's probably worth pursuing. And that's because those sheep shouldn't really have any excuse to go wrong if all of their peers did well in the same season in a reasonably same environment. In that case, it's often a ram issue. Otherwise, it could be some sort of stressor that that group of ewes has been exposed to before all the others. Actually, it can be a really useful early warning system. And the final factor I think should play a role is your own historical results. Like I said at the start, this is one of the few benchmarks that sheep farmers are really good at using. Most of them could tell you their scanning percentage going decades back. So if your barren percentage is significantly different to what you'd expect, maybe more than a percent or two out of your, say, rolling five-year average, that does suggest that something's gone awry. As for benchmarking, at the end of the day, it's yourself and no one else really that you're competing against. One caveat to that though, if similar farms are producing much better results consistently, don't convince yourself that that's impossible for you. Benchmarking against other farms can be a really interesting rabbit hole to go down and still a useful useful exercise, but beware of comparing yourself to neighbors who run subtly different systems, whether that's the breed, the terrain, the stocking density, the level of feeding, and so on. And finally, take the figures you see on social media or here at the pub with a healthy pinch of salt, because all of us, to some extent, curate what we present to other people. If you want to find someone to compare yourself to, try and find an enterprise that's as similar to yours as possible. Anyway, that's my thoughts at the moment on when you should start investigating barren rates in sheep. Hopefully that was useful. If you disagree, if you've got some other thoughts, please let me know in the comments. Have you investigated barren rates recently? How's your scanning gone this year? Again, let me know in the comments. As for sheep scanning, as I found out in this vlog a couple of years ago, it is a bloody difficult skill to learn. If you want to see how I got on in my first attempt, click that little end card here and you'll have a good laugh. You can also check out that vlog I mentioned with Ryan where we went to the Outer Hebrides to scan some Highland cows. Quite apart from anything, stunning scenery, stunning cattle. I hope you enjoyed that. If you did, remember, click that subscribe button, ring the little bell next to it, give the video a thumbs up, leave me a comment. I will see you for the next video.